Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about supports and what they actually look like in real life. So the first support I'm gonna talk about is probably the most known one, and that's gonna be a simple connection or also known as a pin connection. The reason it's called a simple or a pin connection is because it offers no restraint to rotation or it offers no stability. So what this means is it cannot resist a moment force and it can only resist actual and shear forces. The most common example is going to be a simply supported beam and when you draw your sort of 2D analysis you're going to have a normal pin support on one end and also a roller support on the other end. The roller support is there to allow the beam to move in the horizontal direction. So here are some sort of real life examples of what a simply supported beam or a simple connection can look like. The first one we've got here is a steel beam supported on a masonry wall and because the beam is not fixed, it's quite literally just placed on top or bearing onto the wall, this is going to be a simple connection because there's no way that um, any of the moment forces can develop and be sort of transferred into the wall. You'll find these connections all over in sort of traditional housing, you know, or traditional construction with masonry walls. You'll find loose beams all over the place supporting um, floors or supporting walls. In frame construction, especially in steel frame construction, a beam to column simple connection is going to be made up of a fin plate connection. The reason a fin plate connection is a simple connection is because the fin plate is simply not strong enough to resist the forces from moments. A concrete beam or concrete design is slightly harder to tell from the outside because it all looks the same, it's just concrete. What determines whether or not a beam is a fixed or a simple connection is down to the reinforcement detailing. Generally in concrete beam design or detailing, you'll have what we call U-bars at the end of the beams and basically the U-bars say fixed into a column or a wall, this would generally be a simple connection. There are cases when U-bars are sufficient enough to transfer a little bit of moment, but generally if you just see U-bars in a beam, you're going to assume that it's going to be a simply supported beam. It's very similar in concrete column detailing, say you wanted a pin based, all you need to do is provide some bars just to lap into the, or anchor into the foundations. A normal steel column base where it's just the plate um, welded to the sort of eye section or the column section, that's generally going to be a pinned base. Even though this standard base plate detail is going to be what we assume, you know, a pin support, there is going to be an amount of moment capacity that this connection can resist and I'll explain this um, further along in the video. So let's move on to moment connections and moment connections are connections that can resist moment forces or they provide stability. So just as pin connections or simple connections they will be able to resist shear forces and actual forces but they will be able to resist moment forces as well. The amount of stability a moment connection can provide a structure is all going to be down to how stiff that connection is going to be and in turn how much moment the connection can withstand or resist. In 2D analysis when you're just drawing a beam you denote your fixed ends like this. In a 2D frame you kind of add these little blacked out triangles in the corners to show that these are actually fixed connections. A moment connection in the steel frame is typically shown as an end plate and these can be enhanced to resist more moment by basically increasing the bolts or increasing the end plate fitness. This isn't to say that end plates can't be simple, but generally whenever you see an end plate, you can assume that it's going to be able to resist some form of moment. Alternatively, what you can do is add a haunch to the connection, and what this does is essentially increase the section area at the connection point so that it can resist a higher amount of moment and provide additional stability. You'll see haunches all over the place in like really big sheds or really big warehouses. So the next time you kind of wander into any of these warehouses, just have a look at the column and rafter connection and you'll see haunches all over the place. Like I mentioned earlier in concrete frame structures, the amount of moment you can resist in the connection is all down to the detailing. Typically, if it's a fixed connection or a moment connection from the beam to the wall or a column, you'll see the bars from the beam anchored up or anchored down into the column or the wall. This is because you need a long enough lap length to ensure that the stress develops into the bar and continues into the bars from the beam into either the column bars or the wall bars. 
This is also very similar if you're trying to transfer a column moment into the foundation. You just need to ensure that the bars have an appropriate lap into the reinforcement for the foundation. A moment connection in a steel based column is generally quite obvious um, and that's because it's going to have these stiffness plates welded to them. Even though a standard base plate can resist some moment and you can increase the moment capacity by increasing the base plate thickness, generally if you are designing column bases for a high amount of moment you will want to add these stiffeners to them. I mentioned earlier that a simple connection is also known as a pin connection but in actual fact all the connections I just mentioned earlier even if they are technically simple or pinned they all have the ability to resist some amount of moment however small they will provide some form of stability it's just an analysis, you just don't consider it to provide any moment resistance or any stability if they are simply supported or a simple connection. This is a true pin connection and this is because there is completely no way that there is any rotational stiffness. I don't find myself ever specifying these very often but generally where I have seen them or I have specified them myself it's for like an external column because I think these connections can look quite nice and I think architects generally quite like them as well. A slotted hole connection is really really useful for when you're trying to anticipate some movement or when you don't want a column for example to resist a certain load. For example a vertically slotted hole at the top of a post or a column allows for vertical movement. Say you're fixing this post or a column to the soffit or the bottom of a slab above the vertically slotted holes allows the slab to actually deflect without loading the column because you've allowed for this anticipated movement. If the post was actually fixed to the underside of the slab without these vertically slotted holes, when the slab deflects it could actually cause some actual load to be transferred into the post and this is going to be especially bad if the post was not designed originally to resist this vertical force. This situation actually comes up when you're detailing or specifying wind posts. Wind posts are there to resist lateral forces or to restrain external walls in kind of traditional masonry construction buildings. Wind posts are not going to be designed for actual forces, which is why wind posts are prefabricated with vertically slotted holes to allow for the movement for the floor slab above. Right, hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop me a comment. If you want to see further videos, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in my next video. Cheers.